Welcome to another episode of Builds by Bailey. Today we're gonna go ahead and try and install that water temp sensor so we can see what the water temp is on the black Corolla, the liftback. So follow along today as we try to install that. I don't think it's gonna work, but we'll try anyways. In the last video I stated that the water temp sensor, this one right here, was connected to the thermostat housing. Well, I'm wrong. Um, this is the top radiator hose. So the bottom one, which is on the side down here, would be where the uh, thermostat would be. So this is just a housing that comes off the top. So hopefully there's enough room inside here that that probe will stick and we can thread it in with no problems. Um, still may run into an issue. I'll discuss that a little bit when we get there if it happens. Um, if not, then this should be as easy as just plugging it right in. So first thing we're going to do is go in the car and thread the cable through the firewall and out here so we can put the probe in where that uh, where that sensor is at. So we're going to take this long wire that we've got here that comes off of the gauge. We're going to thread it through the firewall uh, so we can mount it somewhere up in here. Um, don't really know where I'm going to mount it just yet. None of the AC stuff in here works, so we may go right in front of the gauges. Um, I'm not sure, but just anywhere where it'll be visible, um, and then we'll put a couple of screws in it and hold it in place. Now that I have the cable pulled through the firewall um, and I'm going to run it right along the side of these cables, I'm just going to zip tie it to it. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull the old thermostat uh, sensor out um, and see what we have to work with there. I'm sure water is going to fall. Um, I'm not too worried about it at the moment. Shouldn't be too much. Just what's in the very top of the radiator um, should come out a little bit. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad. Once it gets below the level, it should be should be fine. Um, so we'll pull that out real quick. We'll see what we have to work with and then we'll see if we can thread the new style in. Okay, so I got the old sensor out, um, and it actually happens to match the thread pitch on the new gauge, so all of that's the same, um, and it actually goes in and it seats like it ought to. So this is actually going to work, uh, I didn't think that it would, but it's actually going to work out. So I'm going to put a little bit of thread tape on the uh, threads for the new one, uh, so it'll act as a little bit better seal. I'm also going to clean up a little bit of that uh, antifreeze and water solution that just came out so that way it's a little bit drier and has a little bit better bonding uh, when I got to thread this back in there. So uh, I'm going to do that real quick. Um, zip tie this cable up some and then it should be ready to test. This particular type gauge doesn't require any type of electricity to see if it works or not. Um, it's uh, mechanical so whenever this probe gets warm it actually moves the needle on the gauge itself. So um, the only electricity that has to go to it is for the lights on the back so you can see it at nighttime. I'm not going to wire that up today because the dash lights don't really work too much in this. So I probably won't be driving this car hardly at all at night. Um, but I still want the gauge in there to work um, the way it ought to. So that way I can make sure I'm not going to overheat this engine and blow it up. So we'll go ahead and like I said thread tape this, install it and uh, zip tie 
the cable up and it should be ready to mount on the inside of the car after that. Okay, now I have the new sensors in. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna zip tie the cable um, in place so it doesn't shift around. Also, we're gonna keep it off of things that are hot because we don't want it to give a false reading. So we don't want that thing to just like skyrocket to like the 300 mark on the gauge. So um, we're gonna get it off the head a little bit and then follow the cables and stuff that are routing themselves um, into the cab. So go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll fasten up the gauge inside to the dash. Okay, that part's finished. Now we're gonna go ahead and go inside and get the gauge actually mounted up. So we're not gonna do anything super fancy. Um, literally just gonna run a couple of screws up into the dash. This dash is a piece of junk, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we just wanna make sure that we have something to read uh, what's actually going on. There you have it, simple water temp gauge, all hooked up, ready to be used. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the dash back in real quick um, and then start this thing up and see if it works. As you see, I went ahead and I bled the coolant system on that. Um, it seems to be running pretty good now. Pretty much turn it over and it'll start right up. Uh, I do need to change the coil out on it. It's arcing uh, with uh, the terminals on it and the cool wire that comes off of it. So I'm gonna change that out. Shouldn't be too expensive. Should be able to get one of those on a Rock Auto for like 10 bucks or so. Um, another thing I found was the, it looks like the pinion seal on the rear axle is leaking. Uh, there's a pretty good sized puddle of oil underneath the car um, where the diff is at. So I probably need to, you know, drop the fluid out of the diff and put new fluid in it. Um, would be a good time to go ahead and weld that diff up if I decide to slide this one. I could, I may just sell it. I haven't decided yet. But uh, for the most part, the thing's running. The gauge is working like it's supposed to. It takes forever for it to warm up. Um, I think part of that is because it's not getting fire on all the cylinders um, correctly all the time because the coil's going out, it's arcing. So when I get the new one of those in, check it again. Um, it looks like all the gauges on the dash seem to be working right now too. Uh, they may have just need to be unplugged and plugged back up. 
So I may have installed that gauge for no reason, but I kind of like that I have one that I can for sure rely on, uh, unlike the one that was in the car with all those weird um, frayed wires and stuff on the back of it. So um, with that being said, uh, once again, I want to thank you guys for watching the videos. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, uh, comment down below, and share with your friends. Thank <laughs> you.